Good morning, CLC family. What a privilege this morning to be able to share the word of God with you. Ek weet as is in ons is nog steeds elke in ons eie huise, miskien sit jy vanmorgen in jou sitkamer, of waar ook al, weet vanmorgen dat ons is lief vir julle, en ons harte gaan uit na julle toe. This morning I want to continue where we started off last week, and last week we spoke about entering the inheritance of God. We focused on three specific areas. The Bible says in Joshua 3 verse 1, Early the next morning, Joshua and all the Israelites left the Keisha Grove and arrived at the banks of the Jordan River where they camped before crossing. Uh, and what we've seen last week is, is there are three areas. The first one is left Acacia Grove. And that means is that the, the, the children of God came out of the wilderness. They are preparing to enter into the new that God has got for them. The old way of thinking, the old way of doing things, the old way of um, how we've operated in the wilderness, we've learned that that's not going to work going forward and that's what we spoke about point number one is, is we need to renew our minds uh, we don't know and as we said last week is, is what what's waiting for us after this period after this lockdown uh, we know there's a lot of people and a lot of businesses that are maybe in a they are worried they, there's fear uh, but we need to renew our mind by understanding that god is in control then we spoke about arrived at the banks of jordan and arriving at that bank of Jordan is Jordan whether you have an obstacle. How am I going to overcome this obstacle? How are we going to enter this promised land and there's an obstacle? Um, you look at your situation this morning and you're asking, you're looking at the obstacle. You're saying, how am I going to go get through this obstacle? And um, the, while we've learned last week is that when we focus on God, um, God will help us. Uh, we need to trust on God. We need to believe the word of God. We need to know that God will take us through. And Joshua said to the children of Israel, because they, they've asked him, how are we going to get through this? And remember, this was a new generation, uh, a new uh, a Joshua generation. They've never entered through um, the Red Sea. Uh, most of them died in the wilderness. Uh, Joshua and Caleb and uh, um, their families, they came through this path. But there's a new generation. And maybe you were asking this morning, how are we going to get through this, this, this new time that's waiting for us? How are we going to cross the Jordan River? And as we said last week, is focus on God. Uh, trust in God. Put your trust in God. Uh, uh, God will open it and God will, will open the river for you and He will help you to get through this. Point number three, we spoke about lodging at the river and lodging at the river indicates to us that we need to spend some time with God. I believe honestly that never in our lives before it's a time where we really need to be, become quiet, um, where you need to go into your um, quiet and your um, have some quiet time with God and really listen what God is speaking to you uh, and spend some time with God. So let's just review our points. First point, we said that we need to uh, acacia growth, which means, means we need to renew our mind. Point number two, focus on God. And point number three, spend some time with God. I want to focus on point number four this morning. And point number four is, is that we need to understand that God is greater than our problem. And that's my theme this morning. Look at your problem, understand your problem, and know that God is bigger than your problem or your situation. Quite interesting is this, um, the last few weeks, I've really spent some time in the Bible and um, um, some history books looking at Joshua 2, Joshua 3, Joshua 4, and Joshua 5. I've really done a, a study to understand what was the difference, what, what, why did Joshua, remember the first time 40 years ago, Joshua and Caleb said that we can take this land, we can enter this land. And 40 years down the line, they're exactly at the same point where they need to enter uh, the promise of God, where they need to enter the inheritance that God has got in store for them. And when you look at the Bible, you will see there's something different. 
And that's what I want to share with you this morning. What, what made it different this time compared to 40 years ago? The Bible says the first thing that I've picked up is that uh, the Bible says in Joshua 2 verse, uh, Joshua 2 verse 1, Joshua sent the two spies secretly. Uh, the people didn't know that he sent these spies to, to Jericho and to go investigate what's happening and how they're going to enter uh, this, pro this promised land. So while they were moving from Acacia uh, Grove, moving to the, uh, the Bible said, to the end of the edge of the Jordan River, and they camped and they're waiting there. In the background, he sent uh, the two spies to go and investigate. And I want to specifically focus on that journey. Uh, which they took and what they've looked at and what they've experienced during, during this journey. I honestly believe this morning, if you want to enter into the inheritance that God has got in store for you, although we know there's a lot of obstacles, this, you meet, we need to cross the Jordan River, there's a lot of giants that we're going to face, um, there's the unknown, we don't know how we're going to get there. Um, and the Bible says... Uh, uh, I just want to get it here, yeah, where is it? It says um, in uh, verse number 4, I know it's verse, When you see the, the priest carrying the ark of the covenant of the Lord, move from your positions and follow them, since you've never traveled this way before. Uh, Joshua 3 verse 4, um, since you've never traveled this um, way before. So what we understand is, is that there's a, there's a way, there's a path that we need to travel that we've never traveled before. And I want to help you this morning and I want to put some tools in your hands to help you to, to get through this difficult time. Uh, so um, the Bible says Joshua sent the spies. Why did he spend, send the spies? They wanted to understand the strategy of the enemy. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 2 verse 11, so that Satan will not outsmart us. The Afrikaans say that ons, that ons, that ons is bekend met die plannen van die vijand. Uh, dit is nie onbekend vir ons nie. And that's what the Bible says, so that we will outsmart the enemy. And the Bible continues and says, for we are familiar with these e evil schemes. Uh, I want to declare this morning, is, is that through the grace of God and through the strength of God and through the power of God and through the knowledge of God, we will outsmart our enemy. I've got um, Simone and Anna-Marie sitting with me, so at least I'm, I'm preaching for two people. And the Bible says on the word of two or three, my, uh, when we agree on the word of God, my, hev my Father in heaven will go into action. And I need agreement this morning that we will outsmart the enemy so we the, uh, the, the what we need to understand is that the enemy has always got a strategy and we need to outsmart that strategy the strategy of Satan is to make your problem bigger than what God is and that's what happened exactly 40 years ago when we go back and I just want to take you 40 years uh, back when the 10 spies went out to Canaan and they, well, they remember there were 12 spies, but there were 10 that said we could not enter this land. It's, we will not be willing to enter this land because of the giants. And that's what Numbers 13 verse 31 declares. But the other men who explored the land with, with him disagreed. So remember, the other men is Caleb and, and Joshua. They said we can take this land. We can enter this land. Why did they say that? Because they understood that their God is bigger than their problem. But now the ten spies come back and they report to the, 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 the people and they report to Joshua and they say, Numbers 13 verse 31, We can't go up against them. They are stronger than what we are. And that's exactly the problem. You see, you, you can decide this morning whether you are going to feed your problem or are you believing this morning that God is bigger than your situation or your problem? And that's what Caleb said in Numbers 13 verse 30. It, but Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. Let's go at once 
and take the land, he said, we can certainly conquer it. We can certainly conquer it. A lot of people are saying today that we don't need to worry because we're all in the same boat. We're all facing financial difficulty. We're all in the lockdown. I want to declare it this morning. We are not all in the same boat. Because in our boat, we've got Jesus Christ, our Savior. And I want to make it very clear this morning. I'm not in the same boat, boat, boat as everyone else. The boat that I am in, God is with me. So although I can see the storm, although I can hear the wind blowing, I can feel the wind blowing, and it looks like we are not safe. I know something this morning that God is in control. I know that God is part of my boat. And irrespective of the storm, irrespective of financial difficulty, irrespective of what has been thrown your way, I've got good news for you this morning. God is greater than your problem. Let's go at once to take the land. He said, we can certainly conquer it. The Bible says in, in Psalms 40, um, 34 verse 8, Taste and see that God is good. How happy is the man who takes refuge in Him. So I want to say this morning, taste. I like that word, taste. We're in a lockdown. And in this lockdown, um, um, uh, I'm quite busy during the day and I'm working hard and working with companies and doing cash flows and doing uh, forecasts. And um, when I really want to relax, as I, will, I will bake something or I'll cook something. Uh, and then um, I'm still on a diet and trying to lose some weight. Uh, it's quite difficult in these times, but I'm succeeding. But what I will do is at the moment I've, I've baked something or I've cooked something, I'll take a small taste of, of that thing or whatever I've baked. Uh, and the, just making sure that what I'm going to present to my wife and to my children that's living with us, it's, 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 it's worthy and it, they can eat it and, it and I've enjoyed it. And if I can enjoy it, they can enjoy it. But I just take a small, a, a small bit and just trying it. But I want to taste and make sure what I share is good. And that's what the Bible says. It says, taste and see that the Lord is good. So I want to conclude and I want to um, end this conversation this morning. So my point this morning is observe, know that God is greater than your situation. That will help you to build confidence in God. So when we looked at, let's go back, at we spoke about the ten spies. We spoke about the, the, the uh, we haven't we spoke about the two spies, but in Numbers thirteen. But I want to continue slightly. I want to move towards the story in Joshua three, where we we see the two spies, and I want to compare what what the ten spies have said, what the two spies are saying. And the two spies in Numbers 13. And then we've got two spies in Joshua. The spies that Joshua sent. And let's just see uh, what are the difference in terms of attitude. Because I really believe for you to enter into God's inheritance. The new that God has got in store for you. We said first, renew your mind. Secondly, we need to f focus on, um, on God. Thirdly, we need to spend some time on God. And now we are saying is, remember, God is greater than any problem or situation that you might face. So what do we need to do? We need to have confidence in God. So remember, we said in Numbers 13, the 10 spies, they, they went out and they said, we will not be able to make, the, um, we will not be able to enter into this land. We cannot. They saw themselves as tiny. They saw themselves as little grasshoppers and they saw themselves and the Bible said small and they said that these big giants will, will, will crush us. We will not make it. And that's what Numbers 13 verse 33 says. Next to them, we felt like grasshoppers and that's 
what they thought of us too. While preparing this message, uh, the moment I saw this next to them, the Lord spoke to me immediately. And he said, they said, next to them we felt like grasshoppers. So what was the problem here? The problem was that they focused on the problem. You see, the more time you spend on your problem, the more you focus on your problem, the more you focus on your situation, you are giving it muscle. You are building muscle. You're giving, you, you are empowering your problem. And that was the problem here. The, the problem was they were focusing on the problem. They were focusing on the giants. And every time they see a giant, they will say, look at this giant. And um, the, they, uh, you need to understand um, that maybe they are uh, halfway in terms of length of the giant. But the more they focused on the giant, the Bible said this giant became so big that they were a little tiny grasshopper next to this giant. And the moment I read this verse, the Lord spoke to me and said, next to them, we felt like grasshoppers. And I, made, and I, I wrote this down. Never position yourself against your problem. Position God next to your problem. And that's the message this morning. If you forget everything that I've just spoken about this morning, what you need to remember, write this down. Put it on your fridge. Never position yourself against your problem. Position God next to your position. And that's exactly what Caleb and Joshua did. Remember we spoke about Caleb and Joshua earlier. The Bible says in Numbers 14 verse 9, they are only helpless prey to us. They have no protection, but God is with us. Don't be afraid of them. What's the difference? So the 10 spies, next to them, we felt like grasshoppers. So they positioned themselves against their problem. Now you see Caleb and Joshua, they are positioning God against the problem that they are facing. And what are they saying? They are saying that this giant, this prey, they are helpless. You need to understand this morning, the moment you position God and next to your problem, the Bible declares that that problem will become helpless. Isn't it wonderful to know this morning that God is in control? They say they have no protection. But remember, but is a qualification. The Lord is with us. Do not be afraid. Quite interesting when you read this passage and you go to Joshua 3. And this struck me even more. The Bible talks about a woman, Rahab. She wasn't a child of God. She wasn't part of of the children of God. She did not experience all the miracles that the, the children of God has seen in the wilderness. And suddenly, these two spies, you know the story, and if you don't know the story, go and read it in Joshua 2. It's worthwhile reading it again. Uh, they, um, some other way, they cross, their roads cross um, Rahab, and she takes them in, and she gives them protection. And while they're there, she says the, says the following in Joshua 2 verse 9. I know the Lord has given you this land, she told them. We are all afraid of you. Everyone in this land is living in terror. Quite interesting. Remember, she's actually part of the enemy. She's part of that clan. clan. She's part of that tribe. She's part of that that yeah that tribe and she talks to Caleb and Joshua and she says I want to come in agreement with you I know something I've heard what your God has done I've heard about the miracles that your God has done and what she's saying is we are afraid of you we are everybody in this land is living in terror and what is she saying? She say, I want to I wanna come in agreement with you. I will help you. I'll make sure that um, you are safeguarded. The soldiers won't get out of you. The king, because remember, the king was looking for them. 
says, but I want to put my trust in your God's, in your God. I want to trust your God. The God that we serve can't help us. But we know there's a living God. And that's the God. And you can go and read that. It's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God that brought you here. That's the God that we believe in. Or I believe in. So what did Rahab immediately do? She, she knew that there's a problem. She knew that they will never survive. She knew that the children of God um, had God on their side. And immediately she goes, she went into agreement. She made an agreement with, with these two spies. And she said, if you look after me. And what's quite interesting, she actually said, I want to make sure that my, my family are safe. She wasn't even looking at her own position. She said, but something I know and something I've experienced and something I have heard. That your God is the only God. And what did she do? She positioned God Almighty against her problem. Because there's no way that she would have made it. There's no way. But the moment she realizes that God is greater than her situation, at that point, she entered into the inheritance that God has for her in store. I want to conclude, and that's my last portion now. So remember what happened. We spoke about the ten Spies, we spoke about the two, we spoke with, 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 in 40 years ago, we spoke about Rahab, and I want to come back to the two spies that, that Joshua has sent into Jericho. So don't get confused, the first ten, two, that's part of the ten. We spoke about Rahab, that's where the two spies in Joshua 2, where Joshua sent them to Rahab, or to Jericho, Rahab take, took um, uh, looked after them she covered them um, the Bible said that she took care of them so that the king could not get hold of them and I want to conclude with this the two spies the Bible says in Joshua 2 verse 24 the Lord has given us the whole land remember they went in they observed same giants same problem Need to um, um, cross the Jordan River. Same obstacles than 40 years ago. Nothing has changed. Big walls around Jericho. Uh, we need to get through these walls. Um, oh, there's a lot of things. You've also, we've just heard this morning that Rahab, um, she confirmed that they were afraid of the children of Israel. Uh, and then they hear what they're saying. Joshua 2 verse 24. The Lord has given us the whole land they said, for all the people in the land are terrified of us. What was quite interesting when I read this passage, it says the Lord has given us, past tense. You can go and read it, Joshua 2. Joshua 3, they're preparing, they, remember we spoke, we read Joshua 3 verse 1, they're preparing to enter, they haven't prepared it yet. You see, but the moment you position God next to your problem, your problem becomes past tense. The Lord has given us the whole land. You see, what you need to do is take this passage in Joshua 2, verse 24, where it says, the Lord has given us the whole land. Write your problem in. The Lord has given me victory over my financial situation. The Lord has given me victory over my working situation. The Lord has given us the whole land, they said, for all the people in the land are terrified of us. You know why Joshua sent the two? Remember, he was part of the twelve. And as a lot of, you read the history books, a lot of history books believe that this, the two spies that's been sent by Joshua, one of them were Caleb. So Caleb was a man of faith. Joshua wanted to make sure this time, that he will not send people into the promised land that's going to come back with a negative report. He wanted to make sure that the people that he are sending, the spies that he are sending, are standing on the word of God. And that's exactly the report he got back. We can conquer this land. The Lord has given us the whole land.
they said. I want, to, I want to declare this morning, the Lord has already given it to you. We'll continue next week and I'm going to, stop, I'm going to really speak about faith that we need to enter. But I want to conclude. I've wrote something down in my notes. Never try to have more faith. Just get to know God better. And because God is faithful, the better you know Him, the more you will trust Him. I remember at the beginning of this COVID, every night I've switched on the news and I've listened. But I must say the last few weeks I've just decided I don't want to hear anything more. I'll get the, the crucial stuff and the stuff that I, would, that I need, I'll get somewhere via WhatsApp. I mean, people are sending all over. And I've decided that I'm going to put God next to my problem. I'm going to put God next to my situation. Because what I've realized is the more I focus on God, the smaller my problem becomes. But the more you focus on your problem, the bigger your problem becomes. Remember this. God is greater than any problem you may have. Let's pray together. I've asked Anna Marie if she will come in at the end and do a prayer for us. So I'm going to invite Anna Marie in and I'm going to ask her just to do a prayer for us and just pray for you. And I really believe that God is going to do something for you. Uh, so go um, to our Facebook page, go to our website. Um, every week we're posting um, daily uh, or every day we're posting daily encouragements. So go through it, read it. If you need us, you're welcome to contact us. You will see our number on the screen as well. Uh, you can WhatsApp us. My number is 082-563-1312. You can contact Anna Marie on her cell phone or you can WhatsApp her um, 076-706-0144. May God bless you. Let us pray. Father, we just want to thank you this morning, Lord, that Amen, we know, Lord, Lord, thank you, Lord, we serve a great and mighty God. Wonderful God. We just want to thank you, Lord, for this word this morning, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, that you just teach us to come close to you. Amen. And Father, when we are close to you and we put our problems next to you. Amen. Our problems seem like nothing, Lord. Amen. And we thank you, Father God, that you will take control thank you, Lord. of our every situation, Lord. And we can just place it in your hands in this morning, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that we will be victorious. We will come out victorious in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father God, that you bless each one at their homes, Lord, where they are. Thank you, Lord. And I thank you, Father God, that the peace of God will be with each Amen. one, Lord. And that they will experience your peace. Amen. And Lord, that you will make a way, Lord, where there seems to be no way. You are the God Amen. of great miracles, Lord. And we just want to honor you and lift you up. Amen. And we give you honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. May God bless you. We love you. And have a wonderful week. We will make um, we will meet again next week. Say goodbye to the people. Anna Amen. Bye-bye. <laughs> have a blessed week. Amen. <laughs>